What's up you guys? Welcome back to the Monkey Cave. Uh, so here we are, we're on to the next truck build, uh, which is this uh, 2005 Sport Track. These are pretty popular among the uh, pre-runner crowd because they're a quad cab, you can put a bunch of people in them, uh, and they have basically the same subframe chassis as a Ford Ranger. Um, so uh, it makes them a popular platform. So this one uh, has already been pre-runnered out or whatever, it's had a modified suspension. Uh, for years now, so it's actually an older build. Um, so that's what we're doing. We're freshening up a few things that are showing their age. Uh, this truck has a Dixon Brothers long travel kit uh, with uh, coilover and bypass, and we'll be installing uh, bump stops for this truck. Uh, it's been around a long time, like I said, so what's happened here is you're starting to see cracks up here and the uh, lower pivots. And in my opinion, that's a result of not actually having a bump stop. What happens is this lower arm comes up and it, it bottoms out essentially through the shocks because there is no bump stop uh, here. So using the shocks as a bump stop and what that does is it puts a leverage right here on that arm out to here from these pivots, all right? And so when that comes to a stop, it forces those bolts down and in turn ends up cracking these pivots right here. So I've got a fix for this and we're gonna get into it right now. All right, so as you guys can see, I stop drilled this crack here. I also took my die grinder and I basically dug out this crack and then I'm gonna weld them in really hot, okay? Uh, but that's only a part of this repair, right? Uh, but you always wanna drill a hole to stop the crack from spreading. What happens is if you try to, try to repair a crack just by welding over it or something like that, um, any part that you may not have seen, like the crack was too small or you, you just barely missed it with your weld in or any of those things will allow that crack to continue to propagate, right? And only get worse. So you always wanna stop it. Even if the crack is slightly beyond there, all right? Hopefully you consume it with the drill bit and then you weld that back in nice and hot. So it really is a game of finding the end of the crack and stop drilling it. guys so what I've done here is I've taken the bolt uh, this is the assembly that holds those lower control arms on and a lot of places if you can help it we try not to replace these bolts uh, because the factory bolts are pretty hard compared to your grade 8s or even your F911 or grade uh, 10 if you want to call it that um, so if you can help it and the bolt is not in bad shape try to retain them unless you're opening the holes up to use a bigger bolt or something like that um, so these are cool, they have a nut lock on them already. Um, so what I've done is I have created a new pivot hole, right? So I took a piece of tube and basically uh, I cut my own washer to fit the bolt, right? And so what's gonna happen is the bolt goes in here through the front of the arm, right? And it takes a socket to get it off and then I'm gonna weld this assembly to that front pivot. And then I'm gonna come in basically with a reinforcing plate that's gonna overlap that guy, uh, it looks like I got a little bit of cleaning to do here. Um, but that's gonna reinforce the entire area. So it's gonna be welded here with a 3 16 uh, plate hole. And then it's gonna fit through this guy. So uh, I've already test fit another piece on the back side. It will get the same treatment so it gets the nut lock. I had to shave the nut lock down if you didn't notice to fit inside of here. Uh, but this in essence will lock it right in place. And most of that's gonna get welded in on the back side of the front pivot. Um, and then that's gonna get its own reinforcing plate as well. And I'll show you on the computer drawing this stuff up a little bit later. Um, but generally this is something you could do by hand. You could have hand cut this, hole saw these holes out, so on and so forth. So uh, pretty fun stuff. But I'm gonna show you guys basically how to fix these cracked lower pivots and reinforce them so that they're stronger than just about anything else around.
So since the last segment, um, over the last couple days, I've been working on this, right? And what it is, is we have the existing shock towers here, okay? Uh, and on the back side, that's where the bypass mounts. And in my opinion, the bypass takes all of the load. Um, so they had trouble actually accessing some of the welding areas, so on and so forth, as far as they're concerned. Uh, so what I did is I built a box uh, that landed on top of their existing towers, and I'm getting ready to do a crossover tube. But while I was doing that, I wanted to tie the two towers together. So the plates that I drew, I always go ahead and try to engage the bolts, okay? Uh, that way, even if anything else starts to show fatigue or any of that, it's still captured by those bolts. Uh, to me, that's important. Uh, I think that's a good load value. Um, and then what I did here is I just made a boss. So I'm gonna do a tube crossover, keep it simple. Um, but uh, to make that boss, all I did was take a pretty heavy walled tube Okay, uh, and I welded uh, an inch and a half tube over the outside of a, a pretty heavy wall. It was like a 250 wall with a 5 8 ID, slightly under. I actually had to machine it on the lathe just a little bit, drill them out, whatever. Um, but that's a 5 8 bolt, slip fits right in there. Uh, and then I can land an inch and a half tube all the way across. Now, I'll share a little something with you guys. Okay, uh, anytime I'm assembling anything, even during the fabrication process, uh, it makes it a little easier to use a little bit of anti-seize on your bolts. Doesn't take much. I keep kind of an old one around, and all I do is just a little bit on there, okay? And the reason you're gonna do that is it's gonna help keep moisture out, okay? But the next time you go to disassemble it, or any of those things, especially if you've been uh, mudding, uh, any kind of water, things like that that cause rust, corrosion, if you've ever tried to get stuck bolts apart, so on and so forth. So in the off-road world, we use anti-seize like it's our religion, right? Everything gets a little bit of this on it. So even during uh, the assembly process, it makes this just a little bit easier. Okay. Even my shocks and my misalignments on my shocks get a little bit of anti-seize. The bolts that go through the shocks, a little bit of anti-seize. All my uniballs, uh, things like that, get a little bit of anti-seize. Anywhere where I'm putting metal on metal, I'm gonna use a little bit of anti-seize. It's a great lubricant. 